Hey, good morning everybody. What's happening YouTube? You guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels. It's Sunday morning and just enjoying my morning coffee. Figured we'd make a video and I wanted to tell you guys about this story. So uh, Airbnb has announced that they're going to ban listings or prohibit landlords from using Airbnb if they have evicted somebody after the eviction moratorium ends. Um, now this to me seems pretty unfair, right? Like if somebody hasn't paid rent for over a year, what is a landlord supposed to do? Let, let them live there forever for free? So, you know, somebody's been letting somebody live in their, their house or their apartment for free for the past 15 months. They finally have the opportunity to evict that person so they get them out of there. Landlords have been hurting. Landlords have been struggling, especially smaller landlords. And now Airbnb is saying, well, if you kick somebody out who, who didn't pay for their apartment, you know, we're not going to let you profit out, profit off of this. Like, what are landlords profiting off of? Landlords are trying to save their house. Landlords are trying to save their ass. But Airbnb is saying, no, if you evicted somebody, uh, you can't use our service. And I'm not sure really what Airbnb expects. Does Airbnb expect landlords to house people forever for free? Um, even though they still have to pay for the upkeep on the place. Some landlords even include utilities. So while some people are not paying rent, there's many landlords out there who are still paying other people's utilities. I think this is a lesson to to never keep utilities in your name. But, you know, that is the, the case that a lot of people are facing. Um, also, you know, the municipalities, they still want their property taxes, even though you're not getting paid as well. So that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Um, I think this is more of kind of a PR move by Airbnb. You know, it's landlords are a very easy group to hate, right? Like everybody kind of hates landlords. Uh, landlords have really gotten a shaft over the past year, right? Nobody expected doctors to provide free care. Nobody expected grocery stores or restaurants to provide free food. But landlords were essentially, you know, essentially had their property seized and were forced to house people for free without getting... Uh, you know, any money back from the government without getting their property taxes waived. Landlords just had to pretty much eat shit for the past year. Um, and now that this is all coming to an end and, and landlords are, you know, rightfully evicting somebody who hasn't paid rent in 15 months. Uh, but, land, you know, Airbnb is, is kind of trying to make the landlords out as the bad guys. What's kind of interesting about this, Airbnb is, is trying to come off like, you know, they're trying to prevent landlords from profiting off, you know, this horrible situation and everything else. Airbnb is a pretty shitty company. Um, you know, Airbnb operates their service illegally in a lot of cities, you know, knowingly lets people rent properties, even though Airbnb is illegal. Um, there's also a recent story inside uh, Airbnb is spending millions of dollars to make nightmare nightmares go away. Uh, there's a, a, a department within Airbnb called like the black box department. And whenever anything bad happens to Airbnb tenants, rather than trying to remedy the situation, rather than trying to keep people safe going forward, their goal is to quiet the situation. So there's a ton of stories like this. But one particular story is a woman was in New York City, uh, New Year's Eve, staying at an Airbnb, you know, went out to party, got back to the place. When she walked into the apartment that she was renting, uh, there was a man in a mask there, held a, held a knife to her throat, raped her. Um, you know, she was able to get free or he, he eventually left. Um, she went to the hospital, called her mom, and Airbnb spent, I think, $7 million making the situation quietly go away. Now, whereas, you know, this story could have gone public and, you know, it, maybe it could have been an opportunity to teach people about safety, uh, maybe to institute some new safety policies policies to protect Airbnb guests. Airbnb wasn't worried about people knowing about this so that they could be more cautious when they're traveling and things like this. Airbnb just wanted to quiet this situation and make it go away. And I believe Airbnb even showed up to the court case just to make sure that like Airbnb wasn't mentioned in the court proceedings, which it wasn't. Um, but Airbnb is far from a nice company, a caring company, um, you know, in terms of like housing and equity and things like that. A lot of communities complain that Airbnb has either caused problems in neighborhoods and their municipalities, uh, or a lot of people claim that Airbnb, you know, raises the cost of housing in an area pricing out locals and pricing out normal people from owning homes in that area. So for Airbnb to act like, you know, they're the quote unquote good guy um, is kind of interesting. Another thing that I thought was interesting, depending on which media outlet we go to to look at this story. So this one comes to Fast Company and the title is Airbnb wants to ban listings of apartments freed up by post moratorium eviction. So pretty straightforward title, right? Not really like a slant there. Uh, but if we go over to the Washington Post, Airbnb plant. Airbnb says it plans to prevent landlords from profiting off pandemic eviction. So, you know, this title kind of turns Airbnb into the good, the good guy trying to prevent people from those mean, mean landlords. 
Whereas, you know, this Fast Company article just kind of, you know, states the uh, states the situation like it is. Airbnb wants to ban listing of apartments freed up by post moratorium evictions. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on Airbnb. Do you like Airbnb? Do you hate Airbnb? Are you an Airbnb host? You know, I, I you know, as, as much as I kind of hate Airbnb as a company and, and as much as this story kind of angers me, I'm not going to completely shit on Airbnb. I mean, it's an interesting concept. It disrupted the travel industry. I will say when I travel, a lot of times I do prefer staying in Airbnbs. You know, in a lot of cities, the hotels are all in like a certain area or a hotel district, and it's kind of cool to be able to stay in a neighborhood. Uh, you know, when I travel, I, I like having my own house in my own yard or, you know, on, on a recent trip that I took to Aruba, uh, we had a cool little house in a neighborhood by the beach, private pool. It's just a different experience than staying in a hotel. So I do like Airbnb, although I will say, you know, if you're just going for a short two or three day weekend, Airbnb is kind of a rip off. The, uh, the cleaning fees have gotten kind of out of control. You know, you wind up, you know, you find a place that's like, you know, a hundred bucks a night or whatever. You stay there for two nights, but then there's like a $180 cleaning fee. Uh, which kind of really inflates the price of everything. So uh, on a recent trip up to Marquette, Michigan, I actually stayed at a Holiday Inn instead of an Airbnb. I kind of missed out on some of the stuff that that you get with an Airbnb, uh, but it wound up being cheaper for a short weekend. But anyhow, let's get into this article. So Airbnb wants to ban listings of apartments freed up by post-moratorium evictions. As evictions seem set to skyrocket across the country, the company says it doesn't want the new units to become short-term rentals, but it will help but but we'll need city's help. So uh, we'll, we'll get into this story in a second. One thing that here's another thing that's kind of crazy to me, right? So whenever the government gets involved in anything, things normally go to shit. Whenever the government uh, interferes with the normal course of, you know, how life and housing and everything else moves on, they disrupt things, right? Like there was going to be a problem with evictions and stuff, period. The, the longer the government you know, kicks a can down the road, essentially, the bigger the problem becomes. So I feel like the government has turned what would be a, a small problem into a giant problem by keeping this going as long as they have. It's also kind of silly to me that, you know, this whole thing was or here. It's a couple things. So first off, the CDC who put the eviction moratorium into, into place, I think a lot of people don't realize this. The CDC is a corporation. It's not the government. It's not a government agency. It's not part of the government. The CDC is a private organization. So this isn't a, a government department. Um, another thing to uh, to kind of take into consideration, pretty much across the country, you know, mask mandates have been lifted. Uh, everything's back at 100% capacity. Last Friday, I was at a big concert with probably, you know, 1,500 people. Um, people are going out to eat. Uh, you know, people are participating in sports, people are going to sports games. I mean, life for the most part is back to normal, yet we're still acting like we can't evict people because it'll spread <coughs> the beer cough. Um, you know, it just kind of seems silly to me that everything's back to normal, but we're still not evicting people. Another kind of interesting thing is at one point early in the pandemic, a lot of people were really hurting. A lot of people had lost their jobs. Uh, the economy was kind of sh suffering for a short period of time, and it was uh, the most, you know, for the most part, kind of the most vulnerable people in society. A lot of people with white collar jobs kept working from home. Uh, but bartenders, waitresses, haircutters, barbacks, you know, massage therapists, uh, anybody who worked in kind of the service industry or retail was really, really affected by this. Um, but I mean, right now we have what there's there's 11 million open jobs out there. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily all the most high paying jobs or the most desirable jobs, but there are 11 million unjobs filled up. Uh, 11 million unfilled jobs out there. Uh, so if people are struggling and they need to get a job, it's pretty easy to get a job right now. Uh, but let's hop into this. The CDC's eviction moratorium is set to expire June 30th, putting millions of Americans who fell behind on their rent during the COVID-19 pandemic at risk, though the moratorium itself hasn't been particularly effective at keeping people from getting evicted. Still, a new wave of evictions could hurt the city's long-term housing supply too, if landlords choose to turn empty units into short-term rentals rather than secure a new long-term tenant, it's a problem Airbnb could exploit, but instead the company says it wants to prevent landlords from profiting off pandemic-related evictions that way. So here's another thing to consider, right? Now that everything's opening up and, uh, you know, people haven't been able to travel for the last year, people have been locked in, you know, essentially people's lives have been put on hold for the last year. There is a huge wave of people wanting wanting to get out there and travel. When I went up to uh, Marquette, Michigan about two weeks ago, I mean, literally every Airbnb within like 45 minutes of the city was booked up. There was no availability whatsoever. So Airbnb actually needs more properties uh, for, you know, the huge throngs of people who are traveling. 
You also have a lot of landlords who are struggling and are really scared to put another tenant in because, you know, this has happened once. Could it happen again? If there's an uptick in COVID cases in the fall, will, you know, will we have another eviction moratorium? Will we have another shutdown? Uh, I'm a landlord myself. And, you know, this past year has really scared the hell out of me. It's pretty scary that uh, the government has basically determined that, you know, there's no such thing as private property anymore. The government can seize your property for the public good. Uh, I know a number of landlords who have just let their properties sit vacant for the past year and just kind of eaten the loss because it's better to have a vacant property than to have somebody in there who's non-paying, who, you know, maybe is running up your utilities, putting wear and tear on the house and who you'll eventually uh, will have to pay a bunch of money to get rid of. Um, I actually just sold uh my property. I had a tenant move out a couple months ago. Um, just put the house on the market. Wound up getting three offers yesterday. Uh, twenty thousand over asking. Uh, so accepted that. So hoping everything goes smooth with the uh, the attorney review and the uh, the inspections and everything. Uh, but you know, part of it is I'm scared off from being a landlord after this past year. The other part is that my home state of Illinois is a shit show. Uh, property taxes are already the highest in the nation. We're one of the highest taxed areas in the country. Um, I'm planning on, on, you know, taking this money and buying a house down in Florida um, where, you know, freedom and private property still exists. Um, but yeah, you know, a, part, a big part of it is I just don't want to own property in Illinois. But beyond that, the whole concept of being a landlord kind of scares me. Uh, so I'm getting out of it and I'm pretty sure the buyer of my house, I just signed a contract yesterday, but I'm pretty sure it's an investment company. And here's what's ultimately going to happen, right? The, the small time landlords, the mom and pop landlords have kind of been screwed here. Uh, the big, pro you know, BlackRock and the big property management companies and big banks are going to swoop in and buy all the property. And if you didn't like your small time landlord, you know, wait until you have one of these mega corporations who are your landlord. They're not going to fix anything for you. They have huge legal teams to make sure you don't get your security deposit back um, and to, you know, to kind of make your life a living hell. So uh, really, it's going to be the the renters uh, that are ultimately going to be hurt by this. And much of the housing supply is going to be bought up by big corporations. We've seen a bunch of articles recently about how BlackRock is, you know, buying up every house on the market for 30, 40 percent over asking. Um, anyhow, back into this article, Airbnb announced Tuesday that it will collaborate with cities to ban landlords from listing any property where the tenant was evicted due to non-payment of rent and where that tenant has been protected by the CDC moratorium. So, you know, what does Airbnb really want here? Airbnb just wants landlords to continue providing free housing for people forever. Um, you know, why doesn't Airbnb put their money where their mouth is and step in and, you know, Airbnb wants to keep people from being evicted. We'll step in and use some of those billions of dollars in profits that you have to, to pay the landlords and house these people. Um, you know, I'm not really sure what this is kind of meant to accomplish. Uh, called the COVID-19 renter protection policy, this new Airbnb policy will be in place until the end of the year, at which point the company will review it, get input from cities and decide whether to extend it. Airbnb needs the participation of cities in order to prevent landlords from turning pandemic evicted units into short term rentals. The platform says it will ban such listings when a city notifies us that those listings are located at rental properties that fit the policy's requirement. Um, and I don't know how widespread or how well this is going to be enforced since, uh, you know, I doubt Airbnb is going to be spending their own resources combing through public records. Um, and I don't know how many cities are going to be wasting their time communicating with Airbnb. Uh, by working with cities to prevent landlords from using our marketplace to profit from removing a vulnerable long-term tenant from their home based on non-payment of rent, of rent, we believe we can send a strong message that will help keep people in their homes at this critical, critical time, the company said in a blog post. Now, again, you know, somebody hasn't paid rent in 15 months, like Airbnb just wants the landlord to keep letting them stay there for free. I know the government loves to say, you know, rent isn't forgiven, it's only put off. Well, you can't get blood from a stone. And if somebody hasn't paid rent for the past year, you know, I've heard numerous stories of landlords who, you know, have tenants $10,000 in the hole to them, $15,000 in the hole, they, they owe $18,000 in back rent. <coughs> What are the, the chances that landlords are ever even get, going to get a fraction of that, uh, let alone get the whole thing? I mean, it's next to zero. So even though rent officially isn't forgiven, rent is you know essentially forgiven. Uh, I think there's been talk of laws that prevent evictions from going on people's records, that prevent landlords from going after people for past rent. So for all intents and purposes, landlords have really kind of gotten fucked and they're not going to wind up getting any of this money. Uh, more than 11 million Ameri uh, more than 11 million Americans are behind on their rent, according to a recent analysis. 
and the end of the National Eviction Moratorium could mean an avalanche of evictions that would create a housing disaster on top of the affordability crisis many cities are already facing. And here's the funny thing. Airbnb is causing this affordability crisis in many cities, but, you know, here they come in saying that they're trying to stop it. Again, this is nothing more than a, a PR move. In some instances, Airbnb has been blamed for flaming the affordability crisis. A 2018 report by the Office of New York City Comptroller found that short-term rental platform contributed to a city rent increase of 9.2% between 2009 and 2016. Airbnb denied the findings, taking issue with the methodology. Preventing landlords from these forthcoming evictions to create more Airbnb units may be difficult because there's not a way for cities to report or review pandemic-related evictions, the company told the Washington Post. It's addressing this through a new portal it built to enable governments to manage short-term rental policies. Uh, let's see here. Airbnb named Andrew Kellick, current senior policy development manager at the company, as head of COVID-19 housing policy to coordinate the Renter Protection Initiative. Kellick will engage cities on implementing the policy over the coming weeks, according to the company. Since our start in 2007, when two of our co-founders put air mattresses on their living room floor to earn money to make their rent, Airbnb has always been a platform dedicated to helping people stay in their homes and reap the benefits of home sharing, the company said in its blog. This commitment has never been stronger than today in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, and that's why we're doing our part to dis disincentivize evictions in collaboration with cities nationwide. So looks like that's uh, kind of the end of the, the article. Um, if you guys want to check out this story from Bloomberg, Airbnb is spending millions of dollars to make nightmares go away. Uh, where they tell the story of the woman who was raped in her, in her uh, Airbnb apartment that um, Airbnb ultimately, you know, made sure didn't make it out to the media and was silenced. Uh, I'll link to that article as well as the one that we just covered from Fast Company. Let me know your thoughts on this. Is Airbnb doing a good thing here? Is this nothing more than kind of like a, an empty PR move that's really kind of shitting on landlords? Would love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button below. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.